Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Network Merchandise Shop. Pick up your logo merchandise by heading over to abvnetwork.com, clicking on shop, and start filling your basket today. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for something for yourself, a customized gift, or logoed items for your business gift shop, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. That's the number two in the bar to go. Don't forget our friends at Neely Family Distillery now ship their unique distilled spirits directly to you. To order yours, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon, brought to you every day of the week. Today we are talking about, well I guess we're going to be trying, Rose and Rye, both the unaged and aged version. Please join me in welcoming my co-host Steve Akeley, along with our special guest, Miss Becca Sue. And who are you? He's (laughs) Rose That's good. good. That's good. For your first, first time. time. First time. You think how bad I was the first exactly. time. Exactly. So, I, I, I mean, I, mean yeah. I, I sounded like I never even went to school. My that first time that, that, that I, never that be I read again. that. <laughs> that was all from the top <laughs> See, of his head. now he respects what you do. Yeah, listening See, this to is me, good. that's how he knew most of the things he He knew say. most of it, yeah. Um, but I think he did pretty yeah. good. I think so, too. So, yeah, we're going to have some fun. We're trying Rose and Rye. Again, a product that literally... You know, grain that just about died out. It was used to make whiskey, Pennsylvania whiskey associated with. Uh, once all those distilleries went out of business, the Rosen Rye disappeared. And Dick Stoll, of course, had a hand in bringing it back. Of course, he had a hand in making today's whiskey, which is pretty cool. And I can't wait to try it. We're going to compare and contrast new make versus some that's been aged two years. Before we get to that, though, Becca, you said there's something you want to talk about. What is that? I do. So uh, this past week... Um, one of the guys from 5280 uh, Whiskey Society, oh, Terry. Yeah. Terry, okay. Uh, came in. He, he was uh, just traveling around. His wife was on a girls' trip, and so he stopped in to see us all the way from Colorado. Um, uh, that's always hey, like, when, like, it, when hey, you know, this is the neighborhood. You don't have to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was in Wyoming earlier in the uh-huh. week and then sure. decided to drive to Kentucky. Sure, that, I mean, that happens. No judgment on that. Love Terry. Um, but something that he asked me that I did not have yes. a great answer for yes. was he said, so when you drill in to the side of this, into a barrel, yeah. I yeah. said, yeah. And he goes, so will the whiskey that comes out from the sides be different than what's in the middle of the barrel? And I said, like, he's like, it, cause it, he's like, it, can it constantly be mixing or is it staying stagnant? And then when you dump it, it all flushes together. He said, or is it going to taste different if somehow you can pull straight from that middle or straight from like right next to the wood, is it going to taste differently? And I looked at him and I was like, I, that, I, I, that makes sense, but I don't know. Yeah. And I mean, how, and how could you, I mean, like, how would you test that for, I mean, I would imagine you can test that. Yes. Right? But I mean, you can here's really what I would say. In, in an in a ultimate lab setting where there's absolutely no movement at all, yes. But I do think there's always movement no matter what. And again, these are things that we probably can't even detect. When, when I go walking in the, in the rickhouse uh, or you got a tour, that, that is movement. That's vibration on the floor. You might not notice that, that there's movement there. But that is movement. Wait, a that lot that of will wind, I suppose. Sl- yeah, that will slightly move that whiskey in there, and and again, so I do think it's already mixed up already. I, I, and again, just theory. And, and it was. I mean, I'm not a scientist. When I was pulling samples out uh, just yesterday, it made me start thinking about it because I was like, Ch- "Is it? Is this going to taste different?" I'm pulling from like more of the center of the barrel than from the sides where there's like more wood contact, and it, it kind of fucked me up a little bit. Like Terry fucked me up a little bit with uh-huh. that because. And, like, you're not wrong with the fact that it's moving around, but, I mean, it's... What about the rotation of the earth? 
The rotation of the Earth is always uh, yeah. yeah there's I mean, tides. There are pro- there has to be tides inside right. of uh, inside exactly. of a bourbon barrel, right? I would think so because of all. Would it be a tide? I think we're blowing Royce's mind. I, what I, if oh, yes, no, I mean, <laughs> all <laughs> compounds inside of that barrel, like everything else, as they said, begin to separate out. Mm-hmm. All right. Now they don't fully separate out, but everything c- continues to separate out over time. And there's an oxidation that occurs from the top of the barrel down, right, as oxygen moves in. But it also occurs at different points throughout the wood as well, at all aspects of the wood, as the angel share happens. I do think there's, I do think there's a variance in it. I don't think it's enough to make much of a difference. Okay. From pulling from the bottom to, say, you drill from this bottom and then drill to the top over here and then maybe from this side. Without moving the barrel at all, if you were able to do that and pull from it, is there much of a difference between the whiskey that's up here and down here? Absolutely not. I think there's a more. I think more of a variance would occur when you dump the barrel and you oxygenate it by putting a breather up in it. I think there's more of a variance, like from when you. Because the difference would be that is, is that you should shake the barrel, right, and move it around. Yeah. Right. So you really move it before you try it because you're not getting. If you're trying to select this barrel out, yeah, you're not getting a great representation of what you're pulling. Yeah. We know this is. I mean, we know this. Uh, this is different because you pulled samples before. Mm-hmm. We try and we have it sitting there, and then we dump the barrel. It's different. And not much, but just a little bit. Not much. No. Do you? Uh, th- there's well, not much. There's and not. There's and not then, and then here's my like other- I said. There's the most difference that would occur, in my opinion, is the oxygenation that occurs when you stick a breather up in it. And wow, I mean, it's like opening it up it. completely. Yeah. Th- this is okay. Here's my next question. So, you wouldn't be able to, like, even testing this out, right? So. Let's say that you drilled one hole higher and the one like really low where like there's a lot of wood contact. Even that wouldn't necessarily work. Well, I guess if you did the top one first, maybe it'd be fine. Uh, but just like the suction down, like towards it would create movement inside the barrel from it sucking towards the, the hole to go out of, right? And so you couldn't even necessarily test it exactly. Right. Right? I mean, I guess you could put... In theory, if, if, if this guy's postulate was uh, need to be tested, you could put like a little window in the middle and see if it looked different. That, at that's that point. what I. That's actually but, what Terry and I said. We we talked about like putting you know kind of like like Buffalo Trace has a, a has about, a, like, looking to see if things yeah. how, how things well, separate. See if it's like yeah. see if it's darker around that edge instead of. See, it's going to be moving the whole time. I think no matter what, it's going. We look at and, it. And Buffalo the, Trace as they the, age. This is what with I a, said. With the glass, with the glass right on the front. There's this, no difference in it. This is what I said to Terry, and I hope that someone may be on here. I, I don't know how anyone even like accomplish this but uh to have a, a long-term camera set up like a, a, a camera set up just like they do in like the the nature films where like you know they watch the, the trees grow and things like that and like set it up with a plexiglass head on that barrel and watch it to see as it's changing because like at, from from, from, from from new make until you know a couple months in whatever uh, and see what, how, like, if there is some sort of, like, like what is happening in there. That's yeah. what I would like to, I would like to watch a, a short video of a barrel actually aging and the, you know, it going in and out of the wood for one thing. Right. Yeah, but it can never be exposed to sunlight either. <laughs> yeah, and that's what makes or it. You, or you mess your experiment up. But yeah. we are in a, a very, uh, you know, the, the age that we're in, you don't necessarily need sunlight to take video anymore. It's interesting. I, I I don't know what all of it means, but I guess it's somewhat interesting. There is, I, I think the bottom line is there's continuous motion inside the barrel. That that yeah. would, uh, you know, the the liquid going in and out of it is going to cause movement. That again, it may be very small. You might not even be able to see it, even if you had a camera. But it's happening. Temperature changes definitely cause it to fluctuate and move. Yeah. And then I would assume as they bring out elements from the barrel, that's going to make a different weight than the other that's there. It's also going to cause there some movement. There is continuous vibration right. as well. Yeah. Just from the earth. I mean, from the earth, yeah. Everything that happens, you know, there's continuous vibration. And there's sound waves that move as well. And the tides that Steve and I were talking exactly. about. Exactly. And radio. The, mo- the and radio moon waves. is coming up. The sun is coming down. The, 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 the tides. They say, you know, there's different sound waves can move through it. Cause the whiskey to move around. Yeah. Yeah, blackened there Metallica. There you go. There you go. I think we've solved this one. Not at all, actually. <laughs> but we tried. We tried. <laughs> yeah, we got some, I, definitely I, some was, interesting uh, experiments we yeah. could definitely it, do. It was something that, like, I, I don't often um, end up with something that I, I have no idea how to answer it. But Terry said that. And I mean, I, I did give him some answers, but I, but I didn't have a, a definitive answer. I, and I didn't even know who to go to to ask. Like I said, I could ask my husband, but... I don't know that he'd know. 
I was like, there's other people I could ask, but I'm, I'm not sure who. Yeah, and actually, I, I, threw, Weebrink I actually threw out Weebrink. I said, I said the main person that would maybe know would be Andrew Weebrink. I right. said, if, if there's one guy you could talk to, and I actually said that they should maybe try to get Weebrink on a, a 5280, uh, like, bourbon oh, society, yeah, he like, whiskey anyway. society thing for him. Yeah. And I said, you should ask him yeah. if you guys do that. So Cool. All right, what we're going to do next, a little bit of variance from the normal show. Usually we're doing cork pops and stuff like that. We are at the Neely family mansion here, and we are unable to <laughs> do that. Manor, <laughs> it's, it's a manor, Steve. It's a manor. manor. There's a, a difference. It's a very humble place to be at is what it is. It's a very we're humble place. In it, it's what we are. So, so we are at the Neely household here. We are unable to do our normal show, but we are going to be trying both the unaged and the aged version, two years. So it is a uh, straight bourbon, which is kind of cool. Or straight rye, I guess I should say, I mean. And we're going to be trying both of those. We'll do that after the break. Hello, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, and I'm excited to announce a brand new partnership with Leatherwood Distillery in Pleasant View, Tennessee. Many of you have perhaps heard of Leatherwood via our co-host on the Bourbon Daily, Kelly Baker, who works there. Well, they are now an official sponsor of the network, and we look forward to everyone getting to know a little bit more about them. Company founder Andrew Lang brought his brewing and distilling hobby with him during his years of service as a Green Beret in the United States Army. Whether he was at his home base of Fort Campbell or during tours of duty in places like Italy or Afghanistan, Lang distilled whatever was available to him locally. We are excited about getting to know Andrew Lang and his team better via our programming and are planning a trip down there for the ABV Network crew very soon. In the meantime, check them out at leatherwooddistillery.com where they will ship bottles directly to you, including their special Remembering 9-11 series, which is raising money for military charities. Seriously, get out there, buy some bottles, help a good cause, and let us know what you think. We're really excited about this partnership. Hello, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, and let's talk for a moment about our sponsors, the people that make this show happen. First up is our friends at Moonshine University. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification at their office in Louisville. The information I learned through lead instructor Colin Blake and their team there is something that I continue to draw upon frequently in my role at the ABV Network. It truly is the standard of establishing a benchmark of knowledge of the bourbon industry. From history to production to brands and people, it's all there. Check out their full listing of programs, including Executive Bourbon Steward Certification, Production Classes if you're considering starting a distillery, and much more at MoonshineUniversity.com. I also want to talk about Neely Family Distillery. Back in May of 2018, I met Royce Neely at Limestone Branch's Craft Bourbon Festival. It ended up not only being the start of a great friendship, I started to truly learn about what makes craft whiskey so amazing. You see, I had been a bourbon drinker for over 30 years at that point, and like many people who had been drinking bourbon a long time, I was hard-coded into thinking Big Bourbon was where it was at and craft was on a journey to get there. Spending time with Royce and learning the things he does to make his whiskey taste better started to really get me to appreciate how things like sweet mashing, Open top fermentation, pot distillation, and the grains you are using not only makes your product taste better coming off the still, but also out of the barrel as well. I still love heritage brands and they make up a bulk of my collection. But when you find a craft distiller that is truly dedicated to the craft of distilling, you are drinking some of the best whiskey out there on the market today. That's exactly what's happening at Neely Family Distillery today. Check them out on the web at neelyfamilydistillery.com or better yet, stop by and see them at their distillery in Sparta, Kentucky. And now, back to the show. This is Kathy Cool, and you are listening to the Bourbon Daily. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today we are trying unaged and aged Rosen Rye Whiskey. Yes, we <laughs> are. Look at him. He's, yeah. he's killing we're hiring. it. We're hiring. So he's we're, killing uh, we'll it. I'm about to lose my job. You might. You might. Because I am. I, I can't speak most of the time. Intern Rice comes in. Yes. Yeah, you got, yeah. I mean, you got to start at the bottom, I, my friend. But yeah. Well, I, 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 <laughs> I'm going to put out some accusations against him to get yeah. him to get him immediately fired. Yeah. Sexual harassment. Oh, yeah. sexual harassment for sure. Uh, he keeps no. touching me. It's strange. <laughs> <laughs> and he will not stop. 
<laughs> All right, let's let's talk. <laughs> let's talk about our, our unaged first. I mean, you gotta love. And again, you and I have tried rose and rye mm. new make before. What? Oh, no, nothing on me. He's yeah, got steak on his face. Do I have steak on my face? No, did you do it to me? No, I was doing it myself. Yeah. <laughs> God, darn. I'm glad this isn't video. This is embarrassing. No, thank That's God. Maybe it should be. Yeah, the one time I look pretty. Yeah. They, you know, we don't do a fucking video. <laughs> Every right. other time I look like a like a hag. The Let's do a hag. video. This is uh, the buttery on the nose. Super buttery. Super buttery. But it, it's like a... It noses just like a, like a, a corn on the cob covered in butter and salt. Yeah, there you go. There you go. All right, let's, let's try it. Here we go. That is... It's just so good. Oh, my God. It's just so good. <laughs> it's, new make, it's, it's maybe the best <laughs> new make that you try. I mean, it's just... I, and I don't know what the proof is or anything like that. That's nice. Off the top of my head. Yeah. So, not sure... But man, that is some really good stuff. Like it, it's, it's got that it's, buttery, but it's also got the spice of the rye. And, but it, yeah, it uh, and, and I, th this is a weird thing I've said to the guys at the distillery before, is when I say it tastes like granulated sugar. Uh huh. And they kind of look at me weird because there's a difference in granulated sugar, brown sugar, caramel, vanilla, like all those different sweets. Oh yeah. Like this, t it it like it tastes like granule, like, like sugar water in like the best way. Yeah, yeah, very good stuff. So you know the story of Rose and Rye again had totally gone out. University of Pennsylvania uh, in a project, but you know they found some seeds there, and of course Stolen Wolf was involved in that. Of course Dick Stoll, uh, you know, was was involved in the, which is great because he's the last guy. He was the last guy to distill with Rose and Rye, and the first guy to distill when they bring it back, which is really cool stuff. So he and Eric Wolf. Uh, really did some amazing things here. Both great distillers. Yes, yeah. So really, really fun. And you get to see those pictures of Dick Stoll watching the new make just coming off the spill. And, uh, you know, how, how awesome is that? This is absolutely delicious. It is. It really is some, some great I would make. just sip on this. Yeah, yeah. It almost makes you think maybe we don't need the aged stuff, but I'm sure going to try the aged stuff that we've got oh, here. Yeah. I'm going to try it, but... This is pretty darn good. The, the, this, uh, this possibly is going to be like eating like a like like cookie dough, where like you think that's the best thing that's ever happened, but then you eat a real cookie and you remember that real cookies are actually amazing. Right. So exactly. I, I feel like that's probably what's going to happen. Oh, I just took a nose of this. The age. Wait till you do that. Wait till you try that. Royce is still working on his new make. Becca's getting ready for her. She's going to pour a little bit for Royce here. No. So he's got some too. No, don't do that. No. Right. We'll just shake the glass. Okay. All right. No fighting, you two. Oh, yeah. Fighting. You for can sure. have that. You can have that. Did you want to work on that? Make. I'll finish this one. Okay. Nah, that's different. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Check that out, Becca. So, I don't even know how to describe that. Like the. <clears throat> The smell that you get at the end of that nose, mm -hmm. it definitely 100% carries over right into that, uh, this two-year-old spirit. Yeah. Mature, more, it's you know, maturing spirit. Comer de luce. Yeah. Let's try this thing. Hey, There's it's Dick Stoll. It's a Dick Stoll. Dick Stoll. Oh, man. The mouth is completely yeah. different than the, than the, uh. That's two years old. That's two years old. Jeez. That's that stuff's ready to go. I mean, that is amazing. So you get it's, a little bit of everything there. From from sweet, there's, there's caramel de luce. Or yeah, you say it. that's what it is. Really creamy. Lingers. Yeah, it lingers, creamy. Yeah, it's, it is like like it, it's not butterscotch. It's like this. This is sweet mashed, right? Uh, I believe so, but it doesn't say here. I believe here. it's sweet mash. I right? believe so, too. Good. Comes in at 102 proof, okay. two-year-old straight rose and rye. Man, that is some delicious stuff. It is very the sweet collagen or heavy, that's for sure. Yeah. That's really, what a great testament to Mr. Dick Stoll. Uh, again, a guy who 
one of the greatest distillers of all time. He's, some, he's made whiskey that some say is the best whiskey that's ever been made. Oh, yeah. So we can say that. We, we can't definitively say it's the best. That's up for argument. But uh, to be in that discussion is pretty cool. Yes, and is. and uh, the fact that uh, you know he made that and then was kind of cast aside because there was no more distilleries in Pennsylvania. Guy you know finishes out his career as a janitor. Hard to believe. You know, worked many years as doing janitorial work. And then at the end of his life, the tail end of his life, he gets this opportunity to come back. You know, Eric Wolf approaches him about this idea. Uh, they end up partnering up and then they, you know, they make whiskey and then they even are involved in this project to bring back Rose and Rye. And what, a, what an unbelievable thing. So, yeah, it really is. You know, that's just a great American story is what it is. Yeah. Uh, to bring that grain back, you know, and it's, it's really cool that Dick Stoll got to see all that happen. I'm just, I'm really happy for that. That he got to experience at the end of his life, see Rose and Rye come back, his name on the distillery, and to get the recognition that he definitely so deserved. That's really kudos to Eric Wolf. Yeah. And the Wolf family, because his father Jim is awesome as well. Yeah, and his wife. Yeah. And his, his wife. Well, Aviana's in there too. I, I didn't so. get to meet her when I was there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, the, the whole family's great, and they're all involved in that distillery. And yes. But yeah, to see Dick Stoll get those accolades, at, at, you know things like uh, the, uh, the you know the whiskey festival in Philadelphia and things like that, you know just just great to see because he truly was one of the all time greats. Oh I mean, yeah, yeah, There's no doubt about that. Yeah. All right. Well, on that note, uh, again, we can't thank the, the team at Stolen Wolf enough for sending us this and giving us the opportunity to try this. Royce, I want you to have this. What's left? Oh, it's not you. a lot there, but put that on your shelf because. You know, your mentor, Dick Stoll, in the last year and a half of his life, uh, was in contact with you quite a bit, helped you out with yeah. a lot of things you're doing at the Obviously, distillery. nothing like, you know, what Eric Wolf got to experience right. when he was around him, but I was lucky enough to be able to talk to him, and he answered my phone calls, which was great, you know, yeah. when I would call. So. You told him you are designing a, a yeast room, he sits there and draws it out. He on did a, draw it here's, out. Here's what it should look like. Yeah. Yep, I got really lucky, and uh, just to be able to talk to the, the old fellow, because he's a very, very sharp guy. Yeah. Yeah, amazing to think about. Uh, could run a whole distillery, but couldn't do an iPad or answer email. <laughs> His wife uh, always like to say yeah, that. That's yeah. great stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Reminds Very. me of uh, oh, Ed Foote. Yeah. His oh, yeah. Uh, hearing aids are harder to work than the column still was. <laughs> what, he, what he told me once. Yeah. All right, well, we'll wrap this one up, as we always do, by talking about where people can find us. Royce, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? Find me on Facebook and Instagram at Neely Family Distillery, NeelyFamilyDistillery.com. All right, Becca. You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Miss Becca Sue one K no C's. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got that company website. That thing's abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, our podcast, and so much more. abvnetwork.com. Royce, anything else to say before we get out of here? Just like to remind the audience to leave us a five star review. Include comments. Include comments. <laughs> Helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, head over to abvnetwork.com or, or patreon.com slash the, ABV, a, the, ABV, the network. ABV network. There you go. Pretty good. That's not bad. I said my piece, Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> take care, guys. We'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's chat for a moment about Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you just want to experiment on a small scale on the stove in your kitchen or try your hand at a bigger setup in the backyard, Moonshine Still Pro can help. They have different still offerings as well as accessories and even grains from Goldstone Mill to help you make whiskey on par with what you get from your favorite distillery. They can even assist with a DIY still project by supplying some of the parts you can't make yourself. Check them out at moonshinestillpro.com. At the ABV Network, we're lucky enough to have some great friends. Amongst those friends is the Goldstein family, owners of Goldstone Mill. Goldstone Mill is a full-service mill offering a variety of heritage and heirloom grains. Their unique approach of working with mills around the country allows them to offer you affordable shipping opportunities to meet the unique needs of your distillery or brewery. They will consult with you to ensure the grains you are selecting meets the unique flavor profiles you are looking for. If you are a home brewer or distiller and you're looking for the grains that your local distillery or brewery uses, Goldstone Mill is the place to look. Check them out on the web at goldstonemill.com. 
Call them at 217-254-6613 or shoot them an email at hello at goldstonemill.com. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. Thank <laughs> you.